are jumping onto our next problem, which was not being able to have enough, enough camber. So the WiseFab arm has this double adjustable scenario, which is really good for drifting. And since we're looking for a lot more camber out of this, we are limited by this second bolt that's threaded in the middle so that you can kind of you can adjust it on the fly it makes it a lot easier so what we're going to do is replace that with this m22 1.5 left hand thread uh, i have to make some spaces for it and it should hopefully get us at least another degree to degree and a half so that we can get some negative uh some bigger negative numbers here uh so yeah this is the difference here m22 1.5 thread and we're gonna transition from this to this. So the threads are a little too long or the shanks shank on it's a little too long so we're gonna end up trimming trimming some threads in a lathe. Gotta say, loading this thing and unloading this thing is the biggest nightmare. <laughs> All right, boys, uh, we are back here at Texero Fabrication with my buddy Victor. He is gonna be doing a bunch of duct work to the Supra. So I'm pumped to be at this point. We can get the hood vent installed, kind of control all the airflow coming through the front bumper, which would be nice. Victor, as you can see, is a phenomenal fabricator and builds some awesome stuff. Very big attention to detail and meticulous about his work. So uh, I think it's in good hands down here. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the finished product. I started this two days ago, just coming up with a game plan. The front of the car was kind of compact, so we trimmed the bump a little bit. Not crazy, just enough to make room for the filter. Pretty much got the radiator one. We just have to finish trimming the bottom here, because the way the bumper sits in the car, it's the perfect way to mount it. If you don't have scoops, the bumper kind of has to go higher than this bar, go in, then drop it. It's making me want to bring everything up just so I can get the bumper into clip. I don't think you guys are gonna be taking this bumper off a lot. We'll make it easy so you guys can remove it. Filters, like I said before, the filters used to sit, sit right here in front of the radiators. We're gonna move them to the side now. They're pretty much gonna sit on the side here. We'll probably do a, a little bit of docking for the filter. You don't wanna close the filter completely in. Right now, they're pretty much gonna sit on this opening one here. So we figured we use an opening for each thing. One for the filter, one for the cooler, one for the radiator. It's going pretty good. Like I said, I make all the scoops out of cardboard first so I know where to break the sheet metal, cut it, this and that. Finished product will just VA everything. That's, that's about it. Doing two cars, or a car and a lift for the first time. We got Evans, very old school, 240. <laughs> it's a little crusty. It's got a- uh, Don't look under it. Certainly some leakage, which is not ideal because the East Coast car is going underneath. This is the first time strapping a car from like the inside underneath. So this is pretty solid. Get the East Coast car into here because it barely even fits really in this space just because of how uh, you know wide the wise fab is. And then we're gonna take the Super down to my 28 foot trailer because we're gonna have to go get suspension, corner balancing, bump steer the front and the rear set ride height and all that stuff. Now my buddy Shane is a shop. We'll be heading down there and then we'll all rendezvous at Lime Rock for an epic weekend. Could have sworn we washed this. <laughs> Tight fit, dude. <laughs> it's tight, dude. How do I even get out of here now? So the first time we've had two cars in here. Two, baby. You can do a three, but we don't need to. What's up? How you doing? What up? How you doing? What's going on? Oh.
Victor, you're a magician. Damn, Victor. Really outdid yourself. She was tight, guys. It's a lot of surgical work when that went down. <laughs> yeah. I said, all of these are welded inside, too. They're all welded inside. So did you weld the outside as well, and then you just grinded everything down yeah. all nice? Yeah. Yep. This is a break. This is welded here, so we just yep. yeah, everything. So we look, to me, it looks a little better. I think it looks but sweet. To do that, you have to weld the inside. Pretty much everything I do here gets DA because I just like to finish on it. And yeah. If you decide to paint and stuff, you yeah. have, have to work is really done. So this opening, I made it bigger. So this opening needs to come around and it would just be a square here. I tried to open this one a little bit more, so that's why it came this way. The actual carbon, save it, save it all. Oh, it's, cool, okay. It's out of the hood. Yeah, nice. This is all I took out of the bumper. Oh, okay. So, like we said, the bumper wasn't exactly the same on both sides. Right. So for me to make it the same, I have to take this much out of one side. Damn, really? Measuring from different areas on the car and everything. That's, yeah. That's what I come up with right Okay. Here. All right, let's get to work, baby. There's a lot more in here than I thought. So we are gonna add a ball valve to the oil fee lines. Not an issue, but these engines, they will hydro lock very easily. We had no, um, no way to turn the oil off from feeding back into the engine. So we would have to drain the oil literally every time we got off the track. So we're gonna add a one-way ball valve into the oil feed line so that when we come off track, we can shut the, the ball valve, you know, open it back up before we go out for back out on track. So yeah, we're gonna do a 90. It comes off the oil tank, and then this is gonna go to the ball valve, and then we're gonna re we're gonna cut and trim our oil feed line here to take out the length for the ball valve. Crimpy. All right, we just finished the ball valve for the oil feed. Boom, that's on. We'll throw a zip tie around that, make sure it's on, and then come off the track and now it's turned off. Victor did a nice cut right here, put a nice channel in there, sprayed it up with some steel it, and we are back in business, baby. Man. Nice work, Victor. Nice work. That's a wrap. We gotta do a heat cycle on the engine. Make sure that our new, our engine heater works. And then just make sure there's no leaks, everything's looking good. Just be confident about rolling into the track. We're running the Mobile One 1550, baby. And now that we have the ball valve, I can keep the oil in the engine after we do a heat cycle. <laughs> so the strut tower that Dom made, titanium ends. We got some nice little gold hardware to toss in here. So I just bonded the, uh, put the glue on and insert everything. We're gonna get it in there and then it's gonna dry overnight. Oh, this is like a 24 hour drying situation. So let's do it. 
the nuts that I because I bought this this hardware so long ago I lost the nuts or they were just misplaced. So I got the gold on the front. We'll have to get something. Get something nice for the back at a later time. I'm hyped on that, dude. That's big time. Are you, we're using our new engine heater for the first time and hoping it goes smoothly. Get close. Cycled. All right, guys, that is a wrap on this episode. Next time you see us, we're going to be at Lime Rock for Grid Life. Massive amount of work done to the car, so I'm super stoked about the upgrades that we did and uh, a lot of the fixes that were made. I do want to shout out RS Future because they did come through with a brand new wing with a lot of extra support and they stood by their product and uh, made it right. So hats off to them and I, and I appreciate them coming on, you know, kind of stepping up and making right on the situation and giving me something that's uh, definitely fitting of the car. Uh, so the only thing we are waiting on is the front splitter, which will go on tomorrow and everything else is dialed. So next up is Taylor Chassis Solutions for corner balance, suspension setup, spring rates, and all the other stuff that we're getting ready for for Lime Rock, so I'm stoked.